Of those three countries, which is the most assertive, the most aggressive in this area? I believe it's China. The U.S. intelligence community said China is meddling in the 2020 election, but how are they doing it? There's many ways they can do that. They can do it through AI and data. How important is big data and AI to this election in 2020? Very, very important. In fact, just today, the Department of Justice has announced the prosecution of five Chinese nationals for hacking into some of the biggest corporations in America: Google, Amazon, Verizon. And now, that's not just because、uh, they want information. That's just not because they have a commercial concern. Less than a month to the election, my interview with David Pamener, former member of the U.S. Army Intelligence, to discuss what the CCP could be doing with big data and AI to influence the most important democratic process of this country. Please subscribe to our channel for the special election coverage this month. This interview and many others will be part of a documentary that will be released on YouTube in October to expose the CCP's meddling in our election, their big data and AI ambition, and how it endangers the foundation of the American democracy. Thank you very much, David, for being with us today. Lovely to be here. You know.、Uh, Attorney General Wayland Barr said the intelligence community has evidence that the Chinese Communist Party is meddling in the U.S. elections, and also the director of national intelligence said China engaged in the election meddling is the greatest national security threat to America. What has China been doing? Who do they support, and what is their goal? Well, one of the advantages the CCP has. Is it has a record because it's been in a continuous leadership since 1949 of being able to plan for decades in a pluralistic democracy like the West. Here in America, we turn over administrations every four, every eight years, and thus policies change. What the CCP wants is turmoil in America because that could create paralysis for America on the world stage. It's almost a political extortion. If you don't elect Biden, the riots will continue. If you don't elect Biden, the Chinese or perhaps the Iranians could move somewhere and give us a national security crisis. So the CCP clearly wants Joe Biden to win, and is doing everything it can with data, with AI, and in other areas to make sure he does. So when the Chinese Communist regime hacked into the DNC system in 2016, what were they trying to do? They were trying to get intelligence, information, biographical information, voter information, perhaps ideas on how the Democrats would be looking at that election cycle. I mean, knowledge is power, and they weren't doing it to be friends to the Democrats. They were using it to use the Democrats as their pawns to gain information on the American political process. So, in other words,、um, they don't have permanent friends or foe. In America, they don't view Democrats as the permanent friend or anything. That's exactly true. You know, Lord Palmerston said in the 19th century, "Nations do not have friends; nations have interests." And the Chinese, because they can, the CCP, because they can, take the long view. Look at that.、Um, they will deal with any administration as long as that administration comports to the CCP view of the world. And this year, things changed. Very much so, because of COVID, because of trade practices. I mean, the Trump administration has an interesting strategy here. On one hand, they've signed very big trade deals、uh, with the CCP. On the other hand, they've pretty much accused them not of of coming up with COVID in the laboratory, but of、uh, exploiting it.、Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of a double message in that regard. But、uh, given the CCP, like any American adversary, wants a weaker, paralyzed. Filled with turmoil, America. That won't happen under Donald Trump. That is happening right now because the Democrats and people like Andy Fund and Black Lives Matter are pushing it.、Um, but if Donald Trump wins, it'll be a mandate to make sure those kind of things stop. China doesn't want that stopped because the more America is in turmoil, the more America is paralyzed by domestic disputes, the more it and other American adversaries like Iran can have their way with the rest of the world. So I mean, if he, if they have to pick between Biden victory and maybe it create this a、uh, chaotic America, which one do you think they will pick? They can have both, because if Biden wins, the right will not stand out. Hopefully, there won't be violence as the left uh, is uh, perpetrating on the streets of America today. 
but the right will become even more aggressive, which means there will be more turmoil, there will be more violence on the streets of America, there will be more riots, hopefully again not from the right. In fact, Kamala Harris said recently that even if she and Joe Biden are elected, the riots should not stop, nor should they stop. Mm -hmm. So you can have both Biden, you can have paralysis, you can have turmoil, and given the state we've seen even yesterday of Joe Biden's physical and mental state, it's very possible we would have more paralysis with the Biden administration than we could with any other scenario. Do you think the CCP can help or or facilitate a, a like a disputed election in America? Oh, there's many ways they can do that. Uh, they could do it through AI and data, as you've uh, mentioned at some time. Um, they are looking at hacking into Secretary of State's office in various states to look at election results, if not election data. There are many ways they can do this. But going back to the turmoil question, um, if there is not, and right now it looks like there may not be, a clear election winner on November 3rd, we could be looking at a scenario like we did in 2000, where it happened in November. We could be looking at a scenario where we don't know going into the next year. That means America has no idea who its commander in chief is. We are paralyzed on the world stage. We are par paralyzed on the diplomatic stage, which means that Iran, China, and other of our adversaries would have free reign to move. Talking about election meddling, you know, people automatically think about Russia because in 2016, I think that's the time when people really started to hear Russia meddling in the elections. And I think the mainstream media is still talking about Russia as the default player who's trying to interfere with the U.S. elections. So how do you compare Russia, Iran, and China? Well, you're right. The mainstream media is talking about it because they're being given their talking points by the Democratic Party. It's a ridiculous comparison. The Russians are a banana republic with some energy resources. They are a spent force. They are third-rate power. They've been so since they lost the Cold War. Uh, they are the willing jackal at the heels of the CCP. They're probably working together on this. And should, does turmoil help them? Yes, I'm quite sure it does. But they don't have the power they used to a generation or two ago to take advantage of it. The CCP does. So you think Russia and China have the same goal? Yes. And that is American instability. That is American turmoil resulting in American paralysis on the world stage. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien said uh, the Chinese and the Russians have been trying to infiltrate into the uh, Secretary of State uh, website all over the country. What are they trying to do? They're trying to gain access literally to election results. Now these are, in every American state, there is a Secretary of State's office at the state level that coordinates elections. That goes down to county election offices and bureaus. What they can do, not only in state elections, but even in local elections, if they can hack in, they can change results for close elections, um, they can get uh, biographical material on voters, they could get um, uh, voter turnout records, they could strike at the very basis of the American democratic process. It's a very, very dangerous game they're playing. Now, do our people like the FBI, NSA, other people know they're doing this? Yes, they do. But it's a, it's a race to see who is more technologically adept and who is paying attention. We better hope we win this one. Okay, so you said that intelligence community people are paying attention to this, but this is a race. Can you elaborate more? Like, are you talking about who has better technology, if China has better technology, the U.S. Uh, intelligence communities can't do anything about it? Well, the U.S. intelligence community is a very, very uh, sharp organization, organizations of, I believe, 17 at this point, intelligence uh, agencies. Uh, the Chinese, again, for a lot of reasons, a lot of it planning in the long term, as we mentioned before, also certainly has certain advantages. However, um, China, under the CCP, is not a society that brooks division. It is not a society that brooks independent thought. In some aspects of American intelligence, they are. There are people that will think outside the box, pe people that will think unconventionally. And that gives us an advantage because Intel work, like many, many other works in the, the years I spent in it, is, as the cliche goes, um, you know, five level chess. You have to not only know where you're going, you have to figure out where the other guy is going and get there first. And I think we're very going to be good at it but there, it can't be a foolproof net. There will be problems, inevitably, because we can't be everywhere with everything every time. I talked to some AI experts from both sides, from China side and from uh, the US side. They said, uh, in terms of technology, America still has the cutting edge technology in terms of uh, big data and AI. But in terms of practice, China has more practices because um, you know China has more data. 
simply mm-hmm. having more data. Mm-hmm. It's so significant to AI, to modeling and stuff. So I was wondering, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of big data and AI, how important is big data and AI to this election in 2020? Very, very important. In fact, just today, the Department of Justice um, has announced the prosecution of five Chinese nationals for hacking into some of the biggest corporations in America, Google, Amazon, Verizon. And now that's not just because uh, they want information. That's just not because they have, a, they have a commercial concern. A lot of those have very personal information on people, their buying habits, their political um, ideologies, etc. So little things like that. Uh, combining with the information they already have, which is just public source. It's very easy to bit and get with the proper amount of data. As you mentioned, anybody could. Com- combine all of that together, and they can put together a scenario that could affect at the very basis, not propaganda at the larger level, not even pop culture, let's say something like TikTok, but at the very basis of dem- American democracy. In effect, they could change the result of an American election. So you said, I mean, we just talked about uh, the Chinese Communist Party hacking into the U.S. systems. They can change uh, voting results and everything. When they steal data from Google and Amazon, what can they do with the data? What, the, what are they trying to do? Um, they can do a lot of things. I mean, obviously, it has personal preferences is there. It has market preferences is there. It has family information. And if they are looking for agents of influence, if they're looking for points of pressure with people, especially in regards to the pop culture in Hollywood, where there's a lot of CCP money, mm-hmm. they can use that to get it. You have mentioned the big data and AI is extremely important for this election. And sources from the Republican side told me that they've been spending millions of dollars, even hundreds of millions of dollars in this regard. What does the race look like? How are the Democrats doing? Well, if you listen to what's going on in Washington right now, as you know, you'll probably hear four or five different stories on the same subject. But it's a race to get their firstest with the mostest, as the cliche goes. Uh, The Democrats uh, need certain groups to turn out, as do the Republicans and how to get to them, and then how to secure ballots at, again, at the very at the local precinct level is something both sides are looking for, looking at, excuse me, will be spending hundreds of million of dollars, and also not just the data itself, but the, um, these uh, subjects will go to court. So there's a lot of legal fees involved too. That's why it's likely we're not gonna see an election result on December 3rd, perhaps not for weeks afterwards, because everything is going to be contested. There's already, I believe, 170 lawsuits right now, just over mail-in balloting alone from both the Republican and the Democrat side. That's not going to get less as we uh, come closer to Election Day. It's going to increase. So are you talking about who has better data, who has better AI, will have a great advantage they over will. the other party? Yep. A- absolutely. Because, you know, that means it's, again, the old um, truism, knowledge is power. What is data? What is AI? It's knowledge. It's raw knowledge. Mm-hmm. It's, in a military term, it's ammunition. And if you have more ammunition than the other guy, you tend to win. Yeah. And we're basically talking about the eight swing states, mm-hmm. right? So if they have, you know, just target those eight states and mm-hmm. have beta, better data and, and AI, they could have, I mean, I mean, just thinking about the scenario, you know, China has the technology, China has the practice. Do you think there's a possibility that China could partner with yes. domestic players in, in the U.S. or they would act alone? Absolutely, they'll partner. Um, you know, the, a lot of people in the U.S., including the Democratic Party, including Black Lives Matter, including Antifa, have similar interest to the CCP, and that is American domestic turmoil. So are they partnering? We don't know at this point. I certainly don't. Could that happen? Is it likely that it's happening? Yes, very much so. Example being... Um, and I know the Senate's investigating this right now, where do the convenient weapons come from in Antifa riots? Where does the money come from? Where does the transportation come from? Where do logistics come from? It's not coming out of the sky. Someone is paying for this. Someone is coordinating it. Mm -hmm. And this someone is going to be an organization with a pretty serious communications and logistical reach. That is probably beyond most of these groups, and it might even be beyond, given the coordination that has to happen, Um, the Democratic Party because it doesn't want its fingerprints on this kind of stuff. So who else could be doing this? Because somebody is. That could very well be the CCP. Also, you talk about the battleground states. There are also some of the minor battleground states that Trump almost won in 16. New Mexico, Mm -hmm. New Hampshire, Mm -hmm. Nevada, 
Minnesota, places um, that he, 10,000 votes, 20,000 votes would have made a lot of difference. They could be targeting those also because targeting the big battlegrounds, um, Michigan, Florida, Pennsylvania is going to draw attention. The smaller ones like New Mexico, places like that may not draw so much attention. Also, it might be easier to get around their ballot security measures. Wow. So if the CCP really wanted, they can do, they can pick a winner in America? Um, they can try. Um, our people who know what they're doing, the FBI is on the case, as is some quite sure other intelligence agencies, um, will be fighting back very, very hard. And we don't know. One of the things, of course, about being uh, not uh, in the intelligence world, uh, because, you know, as I was for some time, but not anymore, or not being on the inside of that thing, just being uh, you know, a contributing editor to Life Set, is that I hear things. I talk to people all the time. And what I'm hearing from both military, from intelligence, and people even on Capitol Hill, is that we're gonna fight back very hard in what the CCP is gonna try to do, but we don't know. Because part of this, obviously the CCP is not advertising of tactics and strategies. We can figure, but we're not gonna figure on everything. We can't be everywhere all the time. And so there probably will be some damage to the election, to the integrity of American elections in November. How much and could it change the result remains to be seen. Is the intelligence community united on this front? I mean... No. The intelligence community is not united about what they had for breakfast this morning, much less uh, the Chinese threat. Uh, the intelligence community is made up of very different parts. You have CIA, who has a certain perspective, DIA, another perspective, uh, ge um, geospatial, another perspective, and they all have different missions also. Uh, you have the uh, director's office, you have White House National Security Council, I mean, there you have the various military intelligence offices some, uh, under the DIA. So, no, um, there are many different perspectives, there are many different uh, perceptions, but it's up to the leaders, not only of those agencies, but of the ODNI, these days, John Ratcliffe, and certainly up to the president to decide who to believe and because and, he's going to get a lot of options from a lot of these people. It happens on every national security question. Uh, very rarely. I mean, it does. It, there are there is some consensus here and there, but uh, rarely at the base level of analysis, there is rarely a lot of consensus. Would that damage the investigation or the efforts to counter the CCP interference? Not really, because it's up to people like John Ratcliffe as the um, at DNI to take all these disparate facts, figures, and analysis and come up with something by his analysis, given what his job is, what he believes to be true, and then present that to the president. Mm -hmm. Now, could he guess wrong? Of course, analysis is not a perfect art. Um, and, and we've guessed wrong before, but a lot of times we've guessed right. And we know what they're up to. We know what the goal is. We know it's about turmoil. We know it's about paralysis. What we have to find out is the means that they're going to use to try to accomplish it. And as you mentioned before, uh, given people you've talked to, we have some advantages in that field in specific tech, not perhaps the amount of data, but in tech. So, you know, it will be a race. And at this point, uh, about two months before the election, it's impossible to tell. But it's not like we're going to let this happen lying down. China has been very aggressive in geopolitics recently. Uh, they had a military exercise in the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait, and they had a conflict with India at the border. What are they trying to do? They're saber rattling. What they want to do, it's, it's part and parcel of the riots on American streets. And the Iranians are doing the same thing per a threat against our ambassador to South Africa. And it's part of the equation. Oh, look. If you just elect Biden, we'll go back into our holes and everything will be fine. We hate Donald Trump. So uh, if Donald Trump is reelected, expect more saber rattling. And what they're trying to do uh, is show turmoil, um, is show the American president dealing with not only a domestic issue, with COVID, with all these other things, with the economy, and now also with a, with a foreign crisis, perhaps a military crisis. What these people want is for Americans to throw up their hands and say, it's too much. It's too much. This is too much turmoil. We want peace and let's elect Biden. But in that peace is surrender. You talked about the American people really don't like their president to go into regional war in the election year. So wouldn't that give China the advantage of, you know, just take Taiwan or take territories because uh, America is too busy with other things? Yeah, that's what they're counting on. I don't think they'll go that far because taking Taiwan would not be as easy as they think. Mm -hmm. um, but they'll saber rattle. They'll, um, they have, I believe, one or two aircraft carriers at this point. They'll put them in the Taiwan Straits. The Iranians will do something around the Strait of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf. The North Koreans could fire a couple of ballistic missiles into the Pacific, perhaps close to our fleet at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. 
there are things they could do to make our national security status um, go to almost crisis situation, mm -hmm. uh, to up the, uh, the DEFCON number. And so if that happens, uh, you know, America is going to be dealing with the crisis we are, with COVID, riots in the streets, the election, and that. Again, they're hoping the American people and the American president fold like a cheap card table. I don't think that's going to happen. Last question. We forget to talk about TikTok. There have been a lot of news coming out about TikTok. And uh, I think the most recent one is TikTok uh, refused to sell its uh, uh, algorithm uh, to America. Uh, why do you think they do that? Uh, TikTok to American popular culture, specifically to possible young voters in America, is a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. uh, the CCP understands that politics and everything in this nation is affected by popular culture. And TikTok is a way for them to get into this. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if close to election day, since a lot of young people use TikTok, we'll see a massive get out the vote drive for Biden on TikTok, mm -hmm. trying to get those young people. It might not even necessarily be specifically for Biden. It could be get out the vote because they know young people tend to vote Democrat, tend to vote more liberal, and this election cycle might tend to vote for Biden. So it is a way for them um, to have pop culture goals, to have those goals come into the election process and to influence through even small things, um, through movies, through entertainment. Again, as we said, a lot of CCP money in Hollywood. Through all those aspects, the American elections, because for a very long time, popular culture has meant as much to American politics as any policy has. What do you think will happen to the 2020 election if uh, TikTok is not banned in America? You'll see an upspike in votes that may or may not be fairly counted for Joe Biden. Because it, it, TikTok is not alone in this. The CCP has a very coordinated, very wide-ranging plan where TikTok is just one aspect of it. It'll add to a, you know, a majority, perhaps, among young people for Biden in certain places, in certain battleground states, in some of the minor battleground states we mentioned, that could push uh, the vote for Biden over the top, and that could give Biden the election. And that's their ultimate goal through TikTok and everything else. The CCP wants Joe Biden to be president. I was wondering if the CCP has a short-term goal in America and the long-term goal in America. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. I mean, the short-term goal being, you know, depends on which administration mm -hmm. could support the Democrats or the Republican. Mm -hmm. But the long-term goal is more consistent. Oh, well, their uh, short-term goal is obviously a Biden administration, obviously to become uh, and a medium-term goal to become the hegemon in the Pacific. The long-range goal is to outproduce and become the number one economy in the world, to outproduce and to outsell, uh, shall we say, America, and not only to extend their geopolitical influence through the Pacific, but perhaps into South America, perhaps into Africa, perhaps into all of Asia. In fact, Chinese money is everywhere across the world. It's in Central America. It's in South America. It's all over Africa and in the uh, mineral deposits in many of those countries. So the CCP is playing a very long-term and a very wide-ranging game, but they're playing patiently and intelligently. So in one sentence, can you summarize what the long-term goal of CCP in regards with America? To make America a second-rate power. Thank you very much, David. You're quite welcome.